I mean, they, they basically had one play. They had one play. They had one play. Yeah. I, I don't really, I don't really know what, what it is, but it feels like the, it feels like that we don't actually start playing defense until third down. Well, we definitely don't start playing defense until they score their first interception. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to My Got a Podcast. I'm Jim Wood. In this episode, John Powell and I review Georgia's 38 to 10 win over Tennessee. We talk about our experiences on Saturday and what stood out to us during the game. As always, remember to check out the newly redesigned MyGotAPodcast.com to see our latest merch. And you can follow us on social media at My Got a Podcast. Finally, we'd love for you to check out our presenting sponsor, Oxia Time, at OxiaTime.com. That's A X I A T I M E.com. Now, let's join the conversation in progress. We're back. How about them dogs, Jim? How about them, JP? How about them? How about them? <laughs> I like that. I like that new. Uh, I like that new new uh, new hoodie you got there. Mm. Yes, arrives today uh, from our friends at Home Field Apparel. Um, it's pretty nice, actually. It's quite comfy. I do like it. Um, so yeah, shout out, shout out to Home Field, uh, increasing, improving the the, the gear game uh, even more. Uh, Homefield.mygotapodcast.com if you want to check anything out yourself. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> then you can then you can rip the G like Jim is. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, got got to add more to the arsenal for the Friday uh, fit picks, I guess. Although I, I I generally only do that when I'm going to the game. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I should add my uh, home game attire watching from home. <laughs> Absolutely. I usually don't do that. Uh, you should. So, John, you didn't open with just as we predicted because we actually weren't super far off. We weren't super far off. Yeah, no, it was it was pretty close. I feel like this was the most uh, we were the closest on this one as, of anything for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? It really was just as we predicted. It really was. It really was. Yeah, <laughs> man. Um, what, uh, you guys had a, you, dude, you had a big morning. You guys had a photo shoot, right? Wasn't, was it family pictures? Am I yeah, getting my days did. right? That was Saturday morning, right? It was Saturday morning. Yeah. That okay. was actually, um, I had, I had, it's like a classic, you know, husband, um, you know, brain fart. Like we, we had, we had family photos on Saturday. <laughs> like that week after we recorded, I was like, kind of like, I am prices to see, like, maybe I could go, but we had pictures on Saturday. There's no way. There's no way. <laughs> uh, too funny. Too funny. But yeah, yeah, we had we had family photos in Atlanta, um, over at uh, at Wayne Park, which is like right in the heart of Midtown, which I guess is maybe foreshadowing for this weekend. But um, mm. yeah, over in the in the Ansley Park area, which if you, which if you've never been there, it's, it's a beautiful beautiful area. Uh, it's a beautiful area of, of Midtown. You feel like you're in like the suburbs as opposed to like in the middle of actual Atlanta, legit Atlanta. Mm. Mm. Um, okay. But yeah, now yeah, so we had we had family photos and then we came back. I got wrapped up in yard work. Um, and, and it had been a few weeks for me to clear the leaves um, <laughs> as we have to do out here because we basically live in the woods. Um, so I had to clear the leaves off and actually um, was overestimating the uh the amount of time it was going to take me to do that so i actually watched the game on delay oh i also had to do my pregame run so that was another thing after the photos mm. the photo timing was 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 changing constantly <laughs> which is a whole other story uh, in and of itself um absolutely mind-boggling how some people operate but it is what it is um but uh yeah we did the we, i did the pre-run pre-game run after i got back just to make sure i got it in and then right. I tried to cram in yard work and that took too long. So I ended up like, I was kind of quiet on the text thread. <laughs> oh, I could all, tell. All morning. I, I knew all something morning. was going on. I was like, where's John? <laughs> John's a little quiet this morning. <laughs> Something's going on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so I was, I was blowing leaves and um, <laughs> I had to catch up and Carter was not happy. Like I came he, in. Did he have to like wait for you to start no, it? Okay. No, okay. No. So, he, okay, he was so he's watching, watching by himself. He, he was watching by himself um and i came in and he gave me the look and i was like oh, i was like i actually walked in through the door and gave him like the dumb and dumber 
so we ran upstairs, took a shower, and you know, I, I told him I was like before I came down, I was like, Carter, pause the game and rewind it before I get downstairs. And he was like, <laughs> Come on, Dad. <laughs> That's hilarious. I was like, I want to watch it live. And so like he watched it, he watched it live upstairs while I caught up downstairs. Okay. And um <laughs> and he uh I, I could hear him like yelling and screaming upstairs. <laughs> So I knew that something good was about to happen. And Amazing. Uh, it, it was it was the uh he, he was like yelling and screaming, like, oh my god, what a play. It was amazing. Like it was the it was the Dylan Bell pass. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah, I it, we ended up I ended up catching up. Like it, it's it's amazing how fast you can catch up with right. no commercials. I I am uh you know, I feel like that was a, a quality dad move on letting him watch it live upstairs and you catching up instead of just being like sorry carter and making him <laughs> rewatch making him everything rel- with you making so, him relive it yeah 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 that was a good move uh, that's funny i'm trying to remember what we because our girls were gone like at the beginning of the game um they oh they had just gone like they actually did grocery shopping for the day um hmm. Uh, cause like we were, we didn't have anything to eat for dinner. So they went and was like grocery shopping for dinner and they bought all the ingredients for the bean dip. Oh. And so they were out at the store while everything was haywire right at the beginning. Uh, and it was actually like when, when they got home with all the bean dip ingredients, that was the, the turning point of the game, which was basically to say after the first play, <laughs> I guess, which is um, <laughs> after the first play. Yeah. But I, the the way that I knew you were, you were behind on things was you, you, <laughs> you texted me and you were like, did you tweet the official hashtag? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I, that, that was when I first started to have my suspicions. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, official hashtag was tweeted. Uh, like I had my hat. Uh, Kim was sitting in her seat on the porch and yet still. Um, you know, first play of the game, boom, uh, what 75 yard touchdown run. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I guess since you were blowing leaves at this point, like for me, like my phone, like lit up, like I got texts from like everyone and like, you know, many, uh, you know, first draft touchdown again, everything's fine. I listened to the podcast. We're good. And I was like, well, I mean, we expected them to score in the first drive, but not the first play. <laughs> it's like, uh, was not, uh, wasn't ready for that. You weren't ready for that one. No, I wasn't ready for that either. Um, but I will have to say, like Kirby's Kirby's joke after after the game was pretty amazing. And like I don't know that you could have asked for anything better from from Kirby in that in that moment. I loved <laughs> he, how he, he was like total deadpan too. Yeah, total deadpan. I, I, I was like, you know, everybody was like joking about how like you know Nick Saban was you know smiling after the press conferences. Uh, mm. preseason or whatever and it's like look out like guys Kirby's joking with <laughs> joking with the media post game uh, <laughs> about about getting scored on on defense on the first play of the game on a 75 yard touchdown run oh. look out yeah yeah who was it like I told Coach you we just love score yeah just get it <laughs> over with just get it but, over with but he didn't laugh or anything and it was like everyone was just like all the reporters laughed and he just like this just sat there with like a straight look on his face uh that's pretty funny <laughs> yeah I mean, um they yeah I, I don't know man I, I hesitate to say that it's foreshadowing for what we could potentially see in the sec championship game but what what we did to him is I, I feel like was a practice round. So like here, here's the buildup for everything thus far. Right. So mm-hmm. like we had Ole Miss, which had a mobile quarterback right. and we were able to basically, you know, effectively shut him down. Mm-hmm. Um, Joe Milton is, you know, by and large, like he, he hasn't been like a lighted up, lighted up, you know, quarterback quarterback. So like he's, he's getting a lot of stuff done with his legs. Um, Jalen Milrow is kind of the same way, although he's starting to come along as a passer lately. But anyway, like it just feels like that this entire stretch here is like just tailor made for us every step along the way. We've got a mobile quarterback, in which we've all been concerned to like got to set the edge in the Ole Miss game. I was concerned about setting the edge in, in the Tennessee game and allowing him to break free. Um, Gary actually called it out on the Tennessee game. Um, 
like there was a couple of plays where they were able to get to the edge really easily. And it yeah. seemed like our guys, like our guys crashed down as opposed to just staying home and, and, you know, establishing the edge, which maybe that was what, that was what the play call was, but like there are multiple times when they got to the edge, but it wasn't enough to make a difference. There wasn't enough to like gash us. So I just feel like that, that it's like a progression of practice. Right. Right. Um, and not only that, but like all the speed of play and all those kinds of things. So um, I don't know. I, it, feel, it feels like that they were, they've been, you know, able to practice mobile quarterbacks a lot lately, which is what I feel like we're going to see with the SEC championship game um, coming up for us, which I know I don't want to look past Georgia Tech, but, you know, it is what it is. That's, that's the big game, right? Like that's the, that's the next big game on our, on our schedule. And um mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no no comment we got we... <laughs> not how i roll jp that's not how i roll <laughs> um i will say the the edge setting issues from this game were more like with the backs like the running backs were getting like i, I don't know actually i guess it was i think the one that gary said I think it was a run play because uh, I remember yeah, I specifically remember him saying that he was like, man, he got to the edge so fast. It was like they just like gave it to him. And it was yeah. kind of weird. Um, I definitely texted my dad early in the game. Like our run defense is driving me crazy um, because it wasn't just the 75 yard touchdown it was on their first couple of drives. Um, <clears throat> there were a few run plays, but then it was just like, you know, like little things here or there. But they would it, you know, they would get like an eight yard run, but then they would do nothing. You know, um, I mean, they, they basically had one play. They had one play. They had one play. Yeah, I I don't really I don't really know what what it is, but it feels like the it feels like that we don't actually start playing defense until third down. Well, we definitely don't start playing defense until they score their first touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But uh, like seriously, like every every time it, it, I mean, I felt like that it came down to like you know, every every time was like. Uh, Every time, like they they would get they would get within third and three, third and four, third and five, like, and they would get nothing. Well, that yeah, that was weird, right? Because it wasn't even like you know, I you was super worried about the third and mediums and third and shorts. But like, I know, I know, they couldn't. We didn't flinch at all. They couldn't they, do anything. They couldn't get them. Yeah, you want to keep them, you know, like third and long and stuff. And we didn't even necessarily do that. Um, but it didn't. It didn't matter. So but yeah, I mean, so you had that one play, seventy five yards. Um, this is the, this is the drive summaries, right? Like one yeah. play, 75 yards, next series, three plays, seven yards, punt, next series, three plays, seven yards, punt, next series, six plays, 29 yards, punt, next series, five plays, 14 yards, punt, next series, nine plays, 56 yards, field goal. Yeah. Next series, three plays, minus one yards, punt. I mean, literally, you, you see, you see the yeah, five yeah. plays, five plays, punt, eleven plays, fifty six, thirty eight yards, they missed the field goal, eight yeah. plays, turnover on downs, three plays, end of game. Like, I mean, that is just d- domination. I mean, that is sexual. <laughs> <laughs> multiple multiple weeks in a row we get a literal laundry list of punt series yeah and not even that but like i mean I, like just i mean just absolute obliteration also uh the broadcast team obviously listens listens to my guy to podcast and we're over dude, how many times did they talk about and dextrous punter like is he gonna punt with his right leg or his left leg yeah which <laughs> i kind of feel like i can't remember which leg it was because i remember like I mean, the guy had so many punts in the game that you could tell, like, I right. feel like he should probably punt right footed or something like that. He definitely punted from, uh, he definitely punted right footed more often than left footed. Uh, yeah. f- from what I recall. We almost um, got to him at one point, which I thought was kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. We did. And then I don't know, I guess while we're on the special teams, like Makai Muse, um, heck of a game just fielding punts. Like there were a lot of hidden yards that he saved where those balls were coming in low and he, he ran up and caught, you know, fair catch in a crowd. Um, it's, you know, that's the kind of thing that doesn't show up on the stat sheet, but that ball could roll, who knows, five, 10, 15 yards further. If he doesn't make those catches, um, he did a really good job fielding yeah, punts sure. in the game. Yeah. So, 
I mean, especially given the fact that he had a lot of practice this this game, and he hasn't exactly been, you know, perfect in fielding punts all season long, so we say. Right. So right. I, I imagine that's probably something that they practice. They're like, look, there's going to be a lot of punts. We're going to need you to practice this this week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess the other thing, early the early fireworks were um, the Tennessee, the one play. And then Dolly Parton. <laughs> oh my gosh! All right, all right. So let's let's talk. Like there was a, there was so much Dolly Parton hype, which like I love Dolly Parton. She's great. Yes. But like yes. I mean, there was a football game going on, and they were sitting there interviewing her the whole time. There was with a the, football game going with, on, after- and not just interviewing her, but like with the camera on her. Yes. Like I mean, and that it was like long. Like it was a really long time. It was like, really it was really long. It was to the point where like Kim Kim was like, Are we missing are we missing the game? Did we miss a play? I'm pretty sure we missed a play. <laughs> yeah, like it's so I, long. I, I love you. I love you, Dolly, but like, you know, bugger off. <laughs> it was yeah. It was excessive. It was excessive. But yes, love love Dolly Parton. Great. I mean, it's cool that she was there and sang Rocky Top. Although she was clearly not happy about uh she was not happy about the sound that she couldn't hear the band or she couldn't hear anything. She, she couldn't I guess, hear anything. I guess her headphones uh, weren't working or whatever. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Kim was like, maybe because she was so mad, her people were like, "You got to put her on TV for <laughs> for this much time to make up it." Well, yeah. Plus, it was like it was like a quasi like promo for her album too, which was like another weird situation. Right. Like, what? Yeah, it was kind of. Why are we talking about this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it was weird. Okay, anyway, sorry, had to bring that up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you were watching at home uh, for for that game, like that's that's definitely something that stuck out. I mean, yeah, talking about portions of the broadcast, <laughs> that was a big portion. Yeah, yeah, no, it it was, it was for real. Like it was, um, it was. Ex- ex- Never seen extensive. anything like it. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, no. Anyway, um, but yeah, um, but so once. After that drive, I mean, our, you know, our offense. I will say, um, we're not so much worried about like the slow starts on the offense anymore. Um, offense came out firing. I mean, I know the first drive resulted in a field goal, um, but still, like, dudes, um, Carson Beck was just like he was dealing in this game. He was on fire. I mean, there was a one stretch where he had what, like eleven straight completions. Yeah. Yeah, he 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 lit it up, man. I mean, there's a couple of plays that like I mean there's like one play to Brock that he kind of fastballed it in there that Brock probably should have caught it. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's yeah. a couple there's a couple of plays there. I mean, he was 24 24 30 for almost 300 yards, three touchdowns. Yeah, I take that. Yeah. I mean, the if you go I was um I was watching with the SEC final on um, on SEC Network this morning, and Ben Watson did like a segment, mm-hmm. or, or just during the during their Georgia segment, Ben Watson kind of like took the clicker or whatever, and they were showing just the timing that he had and like the velocity he was throwing with. Um, it was pretty cool. Like they would they would show like they would freeze frame where the receiver had not even like broke made the break in that route yet. Like their back was still to Beck. The ball mm-hmm. was in the air. It was still like perfect. So it was one of those. To, I know the one you're talking about where Brock turned around and it was kind of in his face and he he dropped it. But there was another one where he caught it. A similar thing. Um, I think that mm-hmm. was on. A, I believe that was a third down conversion. And the other one was the deep the deep post to Rosemary Jack Saint. Um, incredible throw. And like the the replay is really cool to see. I mean, the ball is like ten yards down the field and Rosemary's not even looking yet. Um, turned around and it was right there. It was uh, it was it was beautiful. And then the other thing is, I, I thought they did a. I, I thought there was a good broadcast. By the way, um, they, I felt like they treated it like it was the last Georgia Tennessee game. You know, like they brought back like, a lot of memories. Um, they they did a good job. I thought of showing Stetson running throughout the years. Right, you know, look at how Stetson uh, did things on the ground um, against Tennessee all three times he started against them, and then that was the question of Carson Beck. Right, is could he create with his legs? Um, and he did uh-huh. a good job of that again. 
Um, yeah. I know they brought that up about Kirby saying like he's more athletic than you give him credit for. And he's definitely starting to show that. He really is. Yeah. I, I would say that, that that's an accurate assessment for sure. I think he didn't he scramble for like two first downs. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I believe Maybe so. three. Yeah. As I say, I, at least. I can, I can recall of at least two. Yeah. One of the first half, one in the second half. Yeah. So I don't know, man. He's, he, he is, um, he's playing lights out, man. Yeah. I mean, he's still on that 250 yards passing streak. Like that's been the entire, like literally every, the entire, entire season. So, um, yeah. but, and then the man of the day has got to be Dylan Bell, right? I mean, uh, there's some folks that are saying Marcus Roseby, Jack Saint, but I, I had, I have Dylan Bell in, in that category for sure. Yeah. I mean, both M- of them. MVP of the game. Well, the, so you got the, I mean, the probably the biggest play was that what, like third down and 12 catch he made, um, where through a fade of the sideline and he it was a 50 50 ball and he went up and got it. I mean, that was a huge play. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, obviously he scored two touchdowns too, but, um, it was, I, I think that was probably the most impressive just receiver play for me. Yeah. I mean, the, the receiver, the receiving core played lights out. I mean, and it, we've talked about it the, previously this season, you know, talking about the the depth that this team has. I mean, Ladd obviously, you know, wasn't 100%. I mean, yeah. he, he was out there, but, like, he, he didn't have any targets. Kirby mentioned that in the press conference as well, that, you know, he had something going on with his uh, his ankle. He was, I guess I didn't know this before the game, but, like, he, he had not practiced all week long. Yeah, I didn't realize it either. I did, go, I did finally – um, go back and rewatch the rest of the Ole Miss game and find where it happened because mm-hmm. we were at the game and I know like we got texts like, "Oh, that didn't look good with Lad," but we didn't hear anything. And then I we didn't hear anything about it from Kirby like all week until um, we never heard anything from him. I know Graham posted on Dog Central like Friday night an update, um, but we hadn't heard anything about that all week. Um, but it was actually blocking. It was a play when he was blocking. It um, is when he got when he hurt his ankle against Ole Miss. He didn't even go off a route. Like it was a running play. Um, right. so, but yeah, but it sounds like lower ankles were in, um, didn't practice all week, tried to go, but Kirby said that he got like, he, he tightened up. So that's why he, that's why they took him out basically. Yeah. I, I I'm, I'm figuring that there, it was, it was more of a precautionary situation to try to hold him from doing too much and making, yeah. things, making things worse for later in the season. Well, yeah. When it became apparent that we weren't going to need him. <laughs> game game was in hand uh pretty quickly we didn't need him so yeah exactly no 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 reason no reason to risk injury at that point um and then uh, rara went down too yeah yeah foot i think they said possibly foot sprain some kind of foot some kind of foot injury do you you think turf toe got him jim (laughs) hopefully not (laughs) hopefully not (laughs) <laughs> that's extensive that is extensive time off um so the other, the other thing i want to talk about with, with bell though because it was it was interesting and I, I don't know if you were you probably weren't like live on the on the text thread at this point but when you know dylan bell was the first running back off the bench in this game you know he was so which i was like really uh, many people were very surprised i think the text thread was kind of blowing up like dylan bell like where's where's kendall you know and then like there's kind of a flurry is kendall milton hurt everyone's worried um but now uh having watched the entire game i am i am convinced that dylan bell was the first running back off the bench in order to sell the trick play halfback toss um yeah that's totally why he was in there they wanted to sell that it, it had was, to be believable it was the bobo long con Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. And so then beyond that, have you seen the video that uh Maria Martin posted of it's it's was pregame? Yeah, the pregame yeah. on the tunnel. And Kirby's like patting Dylan Bell on the helmet, like pregame before the game. Like, oh they knew. <laughs> they yeah, I tweeted I, I tweeted it, I tweeted that out and it was like, look at this. Like they, you know, first of all, Kirby's just uber confident, right? He's just oozing confidence in that situation. Yeah. And it happened to be Dylan Bell, and he's looking at Dylan Bell. And he's like, he knew that he was about to blow the doors off that place. Man, I mean, what a game! What a game for him. So, receiving touchdown, passing touchdown, uh, and leading receiver in the game yardage wise, right? I think. Um, I think Rosemary Jackson got him. Was Rosemary? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, you're right. You're right. Okay, he was. 
He was his second by a yard. Sam Lee yeah. was here by a yard. Okay. Yeah, it was close. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it, I think that it was great because I think we've seen flashes of Dylan Bell. You know, unfortunately for Dylan Bell, he's, you know, he's got all these other receivers. You got Dominic Lovett, like which Dominic Lovett, mm-hmm. you know, he didn't have the best game this this uh uh this time around but like you know it's any it's anyone's game right like you hear yeah. about you hear about marvin harrison you hear about these 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 wide receivers at all these other schools this what it was the one player right it's like the one player that you are consistently hearing about we yeah. don't have just one player i mean even brock bowers is is not the headliner of some games you know what i yeah. mean so like, yeah that's that's just how amazingly deep this team truly truly is is that any game any one of them can be schemed into a situation for success and it happened to be dylan bell in this game you know lads yeah. out rah rah's out like next man up next man up yeah man i mean again so with so yeah you, you correct me on rosemary jackson being leading receiver uh by yard huge day for him too though right i mean man it was so a big he, day for him yeah catches a touchdown pass from dylan bell uh, has a huge post we talked about earlier. Um, and then the, his other touchdown, his, his touchdown catch that was a uh, thrown by Carson Beck, dude. That play, I love that play. Like Rosemary Jack Saint worked his way all the way across the field, um, went through a lot of traffic. And there was also a kind of there's basically like two picks almost, um, to get him so wide open. I don't, not an illegal pick, kind of like the legal ones where you make guys run into each other. Um, it was beautiful, it was beautiful play design. Um, I don't know I, the uh, we looked a lot better in the in the red zone. I would say this game than you know, we've we've had some red zone woes earlier earlier this season. Uh, looked a lot better here today. Yeah, um, I remember like uh, watching that watching that play, and I, it, my initial reaction was like, "That's the Michigan play, right?" Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a there's a guy on on Twitter, you know, Hayes Hayes Bringer to me or something like that. Um, I think Chris Chris Hayes he. He's been posting these great videos, these breakdown videos of different plays and things like that. And um, he actually did a little mashup of, you know, the differences between the two different plays. They were, they were not the same play. The, um, are you talking about the halfback pass? The halfback pass, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely different. Yeah, yeah but it looked dif- it looked the same, right? Like, it, my initial reaction was like, oh, my God, it's the same play. <laughs> I had the same I had the same thought. I actually – so I did not see that video, but I just saw um, someone else who, like, quote, tweeted – this video or you know this play with with the other play um it is very similar but one i think what the orange bowl one was like a like it was a handoff um, it was a out handoff. of, out of yeah. the shotgun and this one was like a under under center start off looking like a, more like a toss sweep yep it was it was the toss sweep yep yeah 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 it was beautiful hey i i, I mean you know the bobo has the bobo has the tricks up his sleeve too <laughs> it was perfect too man like they didn't even they didn't pay any attention to, to Marcus Rosemary. They didn't pay any attention to him at all on that play. Yeah, he was standing there. He was standing there all by his lonesome, uh, just waiting on the ball to make it to him, kind of like Veron Haynes back in uh, 2001. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give I'm gonna give a couple of uh, what, what was 51 to seven. I'm, I'm gonna give him some flowers on this because he kind of was the first one to bring it up. But like, I agree. Was it the was it that play that he was talking about where Gary like called it like exactly because there was one play when when he was like you know all the Gary hate or whatever but Gary called it exactly right. Mm. Oh, that was uh no, that was Coach Coach Trill. Coach Trill sent us. Oh, it was yeah. He sent us. He sent us a text. Which play was he talking about though? Okay, so it was Coach Trill, but it was on it was it was defense. So it was on a it was on around. Um, why the first play of the game was so wide open? Okay, for Tennessee. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, perfect. So, like, yeah, that's that's a perfect that's a perfect example. Like, there were multiple points. If you're a Gary hater, this was not a Gary. This was not the game to hate on Gary, in my opinion, because yeah, he was right way more often than he was ever really wrong. Um, because basically, as soon as they snapped the ball and Dylan Bell took the toss. Hit immediately, like as soon as they tossed it out, I said he could throw it, and he did. Like, I mean, it was he identified it before I even thought that that was a possibility. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny. He did the same thing back in what in 2021 when we were at Tennessee. He was calling plays when mm-hmm. uh, remember, uh, James Cook like went in motion and, and was w- moved in, went from tailback to receiver, 
And he was like, one on one, one on one. Sith has got a one on one. And he, he burned the DB touchdown. He, he called that one too. So, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. My, my only Gary complaint, uh, he, he, he corrected himself. Uh, so it was on the, on the Carson Beck interception that wasn't, um, when they, we had an interception, um, but it was, uh, overturned because of defensive holding. Mm -hmm. They all were saying like, Oh, there's no horrible call. And then they brought in the rules analyst and he agreed bad call. And then like they went to commercial and came back and had the reverse angle where you could see the guy tugging on his Jersey and they're like, okay, yeah, that was holding. So, Hey, once he got the angle, um, he could see it. He did correct himself. Yeah, some of those some of those things like I, you, you kind of wish that you had better angles because on the first play of the game, talking about angles, like I mean, there was there was a defender there was a defender holding uh, was it CJ CJ Allen CJ Allen there was a defender that was literally like bear hugging him like his hands were literally on the numbers like hugging him <laughs> right yeah yeah we there were so many guys overran that play. <laughs> Right. Uh, so but that wasn't the only one. Like there were multiple. There, were, there was another one like, where they were basically had the guy had his arms around Michael Williams when Michael was trying to, um, you know, go after the quarterback or whatever. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Not not all the plays went. Not all the plays went Georgia's way. That's for sure. But yeah. Gary, this was this was this was not a game for the Gary haters for sure because I thought that he did a great job. Yeah, it was a good send off. It was a good send off for the series. Mm. Yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, why, why don't we take a brief moment to remind everyone that season four of My Got a Podcast is presented by Oxia Time. Uh, so Oxia Time is a uh, their America design, um, a Swiss made watches, uh, custom watch company. You got to check out their 2021 and 2022 Georgia National Championship watch collection. Uh, the 2023 CFP um, watches are being designed now. We've actually already seen just the CFP logo uh, with the 2024 uh, logo on there, seen that design release. So they are, they're, they're coming, uh, as well. So head over to oxiatime.com. That's A X I A T I M E.com. Be sure to go check them out. Uh, and you can use the code, my got a podcast to get a free presentation box, uh, to come along with your timepiece. Uh, so you can put it on display in your house when it's not on your wrist. Right on. Watch still says that we're undefeated, Jim. Still undefeated, still uh, back-to-back national champions. Which why don't why don't we run down some of the things that have happened, John? So that's right. Uh, so we're on a twenty-eight game win streak. Uh, that is tied for the longest winning streak in SEC history. Um, so we've got a, a chance to break that, set that record uh, next week against Georgia Tech. Um, Georgia has gone has had three straight undefeated sec regular seasons can we can we can we like uh hover on that last point uh-huh. that we could break the record against mm-hmm. georgia tech who was a founding mm-hmm. member of the sec <laughs> uh <laughs> that would be delicious <laughs> um so yeah so three straight undefeated sec regular seasons which that was the affleck trivia question by the way which was uh who was oh, the last I mean, team i don't even remember you seeing it okay so who was the last team to go undefeated in the sec three straight years three years in a row that was the affleck trivia question oh uh, okay okay it was it, uh was it like alabama or something like that no that's actually what i said it was georgia from 80 to 82 oh wow okay yeah um but we are the first ever team in SEC history to go eight and oh eight, eight and oh yeah in the SEC three years in a row. So that has never been done before. So that that's the second thing, right? So we already knew Georgia's first team to ever uh go to six out of seven SEC championship games. Um, but also now uh first ever to go eight and oh in the SEC three years in a row. Pretty crazy, man. History in the <laughs> making. These history. are the good old days. Yeah, dude. It's uh it, I mean, it was it was so great. It was so great. And like, you know, the fact like in hindsight, like you, yes, it was frustrating at the time, but in hindsight, the 75 yard touchdown run, like gave, like they were so excited <laughs> and they were so it happy. Allowed, it allowed the soul sucking nature of that it game like, to it, just be fully, fully optimized. Uh, it did. And um, the skinny dog, skinny 10, <laughs> his video. <laughs> Uh, that was so funny <laughs> which if you haven't seen it i'll try to describe it so basically like has the 75 yard touchdown touchdown run by tennessee and then it just edits and like he it kept that score there but then it was like they've done it and like tennessee fans like rush the field fireworks everywhere 
<laughs> you should you should put that on the on the YouTube version. Oh man, it is so good. It is so good. Oh man, it's so good. It really is. <laughs> the uh, I, so post game like the the t- the tweets that we were firing out like the the reaction gifts and things like that 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 was another like post game um storyline for you and i because i feel like my, oh my notifications gosh. were melted for a period of about eight hours r.i.p notifications and apologies to everyone from dog central that i tagged <laughs> on the gif um if i so what was it it was the javon bullard gif yeah which uh, I, I thought it was sword but i guess it's like a seat belt like i, I thought know. it was a sword too but yeah apparently it's seat belt strap like strap in or something like that or lock in or i don't know someone yeah. someone can translate the youths for us please yeah yeah <laughs> so i was but, confused because carter like like there's a baseball there's a baseball thing like when you strike someone out like you call you say sword or whatever like mm-hmm. Car- carter that was like a big thing during the baseball season was carter would see a strike and be like sword <laughs> and I thought yeah, that that's what he did yeah yeah but man i mean yeah that that gif went kind of that went a little nuts. Um, so yeah, we did had you, that. Did you tag Hunter in that? Because then we could give him a taste of his own medicine. I think I did. <laughs> I think Hunter was tagged in that. Amazing. Um, there was that. There was the so you had already had you had the video ready with like the um you we were trying to decide which song to use. And then my sister sent me sent me a song and and like and I told me to tell you about the song, and I did, and then that ended up being the song for the video. Yeah, the the, the, Chuck, the, Chuck, the Chuck Norris coming out of the river or the water or whatever <laughs> as the Georgia Bulldogs and then just gunning down Tennessee. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I love that one. I had just just for in case anybody has is, is familiar with that video that we posted. Um, the original song was supposed to be Tennessee River. <laughs> right, right. Or wait, no, Whiskey River. It was supposed to be Whiskey River um but uh by um by willie nelson but um when she told me that she's like you need to send this song to john the burn one down since we talked about uh, since we talked about ben harbour yeah since we talked about burning down the stadium (laughs) (laughs) that was great that was great uh yeah that's good times it was good times oh man um let's see you also you made some headway in uh coaches over unders john Mm. so Moment by moment. Moment by moment. <laughs> you're gonna keep chopping. Um, so let's see. You went six and two. I went four and four. So you gained two spots on me. Uh I'm still in the lead, 54 and 34 overall, but you're 48 and 40. Um, I feel like you, I don't know, John. You're you you're having all this doom and gloom. You're within striking distance, especially with uh considering we have the preseason ones to come back. Um it feels I'm, it feels insurmountable. I will say the one that I was most proud of was that I nailed the uh, hobnail boot references because I said (laughs) there will be one. There will be one as it starts and then they won't come back to it. And that's what happened. So, yeah. Thanks, Coach. I can't remember if I hit that one or missed that one. You missed. You went over. I went under. Uh Uh, So that that was was a desperation mode. That was a rare uh, disagree on the most miscellaneous. Um, and coach actually had to track that down, but I, I agree with his assessment. That's how I remembered it. But like people were tweeting, uh, <laughs> right, right off the bat, I have a coach tweeted it. He was like, already won one before the, before kickoff. Um, uh, but it kind of, it, it hung there for the, for the duration. But yeah, man, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to audit the game again. <laughs> <laughs> Go back and rewatch. Uh, I need, yes. I need a Deloitte. We need someone from Deloitte to audit this. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it was only once. It was only once. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So it was a good day, man. It was, it was a beautiful outside. Um, did you watch the game inside or outside? You're you what you watch it inside. No, I, we watched it inside. Like you said, I, I thought about going out, but like then there would, I would have had to have played catch up even longer. Like mm, I was, I was yeah. already over budget on my time. So got it. Uh, I did end up having a fire outside afterwards. So that was nice. We did too. We had a great fire. Like sometimes I struggle getting the fire, like cooking, right. You know, and mm-hmm. um lit lit perfectly we lit it like actually like right before the fourth quarter um mm. and then had that out there and kind of sat and watched some of the uh few other later games um took a little break watched some tv with the fam but then i finished it the night watching the night games so it was a good day of college football um i mean i like i know everyone kind of looked at it as a a boring 
weekend. And I know there were a lot of boring matchups, but those 12 o'clock games were all really close. Mm -hmm. Um, And then uh, the night games delivered Florida, you know, got, got another L as yet another L in Florida. Um, (laughs) Still not bowl eligible yet. Uh, That game was nuts. The Washington Oregon state game in the rain was kind of crazy. Yeah. I saw a little bit of that one. I saw a little bit of that one. I thought it was going to be a little bit closer than it was. Which one? Go back and look at oh the the Washington. I was really hoping that Washington was going to lose and kind of upset the apple cart, so to speak. Yeah, wow, it was close. It was only a two point game. Mm-hmm. It was close, but yeah, um, kind of faltered late. It mm-hmm. was super. It stunk to see a Florida State's quarterback go down, though. That's uh, that was brutal. That's throwing a wrench in the rest of the season too. Um, yeah, things, so things are about to get really interesting. Yeah, because. If we end up, if like, let's say, you know, everything transpires, we're in the CFP. If we're at rank one and they're ranked four, now right. everybody's going to be talking about, oh, you got to go to Florida State without Jordan Travis. <laughs> <laughs> right. 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 Well, they, they got to get through. Asterisk on it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I guess we'll talk, we could maybe talk about that next episode, but they got to get through Florida first and I guess Louisville too. But so, all right. So here's, here's a, um, I guess we don't have we don't really have too many too many examples of this. So I have a bone to pick with uh, some of the stats that we're seeing sh- take shape, um, particularly along the defense and offensive sides of of the ball. So, dude, like if you look at if you look at the way that the season is kind of shaped out, like look at like the national like the national rankings for like defense, for example, mm. like every single one of the top like. 10 or five is like they're they're all big 10 schools like Mm. do we really think that the big 10 is that great at defense like georgia for for comparison you know scoring defense georgia is ranked uh we're ranked number five right yeah alabama is ranked 14 you know like but michigan nine points a game ohio state nine points a game iowa 12 points a game penn state 12 and a half points a game like what so you're just wondering, is it really good defense or is, is it just really, bad or is it bad offense in the big is 10? It, is it really that good? Is kind of the thing. And then, you know, yeah. I think I'm pretty sure like it's kind of a similar story, like on the flip side of the ball, like on the offensive side, it's it's kind of the same thing. Like you've got all these different like big 12 teams in there. It's like I don't know. I, I a whole, it's a whole lot of sus at the top at the tops of these things. And I, it's it's gonna be interesting to watch this shake out as the as the postseason goes, where you know, all of a sudden you got teams like here at the end of the season, you got Florida playing Florida State. Like, obviously, Florida State's not going to be completely, you know, a hundred percent on the offensive side, but like they've got to play an SEC team. So when the bowl games start coming around, it is going to be kind of interesting to me to see the Big Ten and the Big Twelve um, and the and the Pac, you know, whatever we're calling them now, Pac. 12 or whatever they they are. Um, they are still the Pac-12, but they're about to be the Pac-2. There's yeah. two teams left. <laughs> Have you heard about how, did we talk about how like they're going to keep all the money or something? Have you heard about this? Uh-uh. There's something about like technically they're going to be the only two teams left and so they're saying that they they get all the TV re- revenue or something like that and they're going to like hoard it or something and like legally apparently they do have kind of have a leg to stand on. <laughs> Interesting. So and you're the, saying that when they go to do the the disbursement at the end of the year, mm-hmm. that they're just going to keep all the money. And apparently, they want to use that money to like fund attract teams to rebuild the Pac-12, like cherry pick schools from the Mountain West and whatever, and try to build out a new conference. So I don't know. We'll yeah. see. I can't believe that there's two teams that are going to be still still stick, sticking around there. It just makes no sense to me. Well, they just they are they just got left out. They didn't get picked. Basically, you know, I mean, yeah, but I mean, they didn't get picked because they didn't like go out and try to get picked. You know what I mean? Like, right, right, right. Yeah. Wow. I, I hate I hate all that stuff. All That's, that is. Yeah. Get off my lawn. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, I I, I still it, like what a what a time to be alive in that, you know, we just keep boat racing Tennessee at Tennessee. I, I just think back <laughs> to like when like when i got to college i was like oh my gosh we're never going to beat tennessee you know we beat them in in 2000 in 2000 when you're a freshman and we tried the goalpost down 
um, just to see the way this rivalry has turned, um, the way we've turned it around and it was another blowout in England. I mean, that was, um, like we talked about, that's what's happened every time we've gone up there under Kirby, um, blew right. again. I, I will say this. It was even worse than the score. I feel like at the end of the day, I mean, yeah. 38 to 10, like it could have been a lot worse. Yeah, you you run down those those stats, and I'll I'll kind of hearken it to Kirby's comments about the Heisman race, right? Mm-hmm. He literally said in the press conference that you don't need to run the score, we don't need to run the score up, kind of things. Yeah, yeah. That that is exactly why people have been questioning this team all season long because in their eyes, you score forty points, and we can just park the bus and just pack it in, and just control the game from that point forward. Right. And with the exception of these, with the exception of these handful of games, which I, I do have a little bit of a bone to pick with Kirby on this one, though, because like the game was well in hand in the fourth quarter. Right. But mm-hmm. Carson Beck was in the game until there was like three or four minutes left in the in the game or something like that. It was kind of weird. I, I texted I texted the boys. I was like, why is Beck still in the game? Like, why don't they let Brock come up there and just run the offense like we did against Ole Miss? Mm hmm. Because mm-hmm. he ran the offense and we scored another touchdown and we put a 50 burger on him, right? Like, yeah, I mean, I, it, I did, I thought it was kind of weird too. And then, like, it, I guess it kind of backfired. I mean, we had the, like the one, like the rare misfire, uh, with like the, <laughs> the bad snap that it was a fumble and they got the ball. Um, because like to me, it actually felt like when Beck tried to back out there for that drive, I was like, oh my gosh, I guess Kirby, is he going to run it up? Like, is he mad? Like, is he going to try to run it up on Tennessee? Um, and then we ended up not, you know, scoring after that point. But I agree. I thought it was kind of weird. It, okay. So also on the broadcast, they kept being like, Carson Beck's going to get a curtain call. And I was like, at Tennessee? <laughs> <laughs> that seems kind of weird. Uh, I thought that I thought that was kind of a funny thing to say. But I was like, I don't know. I, I guess it was just Georgia fans left in the stadium at that point. So maybe that would have made it sense. It was pretty empty. It was pretty empty after the third quarter, I think, right? Like, mm-hmm. Um, they cleared they cleared that place out pretty good. Um, there's something else I was going to mention that uh, came came to head came to my mind, but I can't remember what it was now. Um, Brock Bowers being awesome. Did did did, did or did he not, angry, did he did, angry, yeah, angry Brock Brock Bowers? Bowers. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, there the, the rumor is that that guy spit on him, spit on his face. That's I the mean, rumor. But he definitely was in a position. Where he yeah. did something to him in his face, whether it was something that he said or maybe he was talking, and you know, you know, when you're talking trash like in a violent manner, like there's, you can spit yeah. a little bit. So maybe he didn't intend to spit, but I don't know. I all I can say is is that Brock, like that's the first time I've ever seen that guy react. Yeah, yeah, seriously. I mean, he flipped out. Delp came running in there. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, something happened. Um, I will say he got asked in the post, like someone actually asked him like in the post game, like directly said, did he spit on you? And he kind of, and he was like, oh no, no, no. So, but who knows? You know, he's not going to say yes, even if it happened, but yeah, dude, why are you trying to make Brock Bowers angry? seems like a bad <laughs> idea to me. Yeah. Seems like a bad idea for sure. Um, yeah, man, his touchdown, his touchdown was sick. The way he twisted and, and extended over the, over the, um, over the goal line, um, there was a there was a bit of a he came up limping that one time. It was a little scary. Yeah, little... Um, it's like you know, stupid nail and turf. Um, oh, that's what I was gonna say. You just you just hit you just hit it like you know Tate, friend of the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Friend of the show Tate Ratledge took t- took a knock there. Have, which have they updated anybody on that? Like, is there so... any updates on Tate? What I saw, I just saw from just from Kirby's press conference. Um, he said that he like banged his knee, like he had, like his knee hit someone else's knee, banged knees. Um, that they're uh, that they weren't sure that he he tried, like he kind of tried to see like could he go back in, he couldn't. Um, but we don't so know. We're yet. thinking like a deep contusion kind of situation, or I have no idea, no idea. Mm. So because they, they they actually did the x-rays for um Rara because Rara Kirby was saying that they the x-rays came back negative. 
So we know for sure Rara was was a negative X ray, but they didn't say anything about Tate's. So like, did they even get X rays? So well, Kirby Kirby said no X ray or no damage there. I don't know what that means. And then he said he told me he thinks he'll be able to play this week. So we'll see. That's what he said after the game. That's good. Yeah, I would say I would say that that's promising. Yeah, agreed. Obviously, agreed. we're gonna have to wait and see if he gets the uh, the Kirby yeah. kiss of death, but <laughs> right, you know, right. The hopeful, the hopeful kiss of death, but yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. I don't know how much you help, how much else you have, but bef- I did just want to say before we wrap, remember, hit up to hit up uh, my, my got a podcast.com. Um, we've got the store there. Uh, you can get the hats that John and I have on. Um, and also you can see some of the work of working web media. Um, you know, they hooked us up with our new site. Um, so you can go check them out. If you need help with, you got a small business, you need help with your website, maybe just some online presence assistance, um, head over to workingwebmedia.com slash dogs. Uh, they'll know that we sent you their way. And it's a, you know, it's a nice, uh, page with a form. You can set up time to, to, uh, interact with them, set up a meeting, um, and you can talk through what they can do to help you out. So be sure to go check them out as well. But yeah, dude, uh, didn't hear, didn't hear a lot of Rocky top. Uh, which is always good <laughs> other than when Dolly sang it, which we don't need to talk about that again, but, uh, always which, nice to, to silence that crowd. Uh, um, apologies if you are, were a fan of that performance, but I would say that she's probably had better performances. I do. I mean, she couldn't hear the, she couldn't without, you know, being able to, she couldn't hear anything. So I think her timing was off cause she couldn't hear what was going on. That's hard. Yeah. So, um, bless her heart. <laughs> I, I did see, have you seen the pictures? Like, it's photoshopped, but she was wearing like it was from another event or another, something. Another and era. <laughs> yeah, and she's like wearing like red clothing, and so someone like photoshopped a G on it. It was like Dolly has entered the transfer portal. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I also saw the one where she's like dressed in red with her hands up like this, like go dogs. <laughs> <laughs> the Dolly uh, memes. The Dolly memes were were amazing. Those were good. Those were good. Did, uh, and I know uh, also a friend of the show, George Foster, was at this game. He said this was the first time he'd gone up there since the hobnail boot. He'd never been there as a fan. Um, so he was there. He went up with like Charles Grant and some other guys. Uh, I saw posted, those guys. Yeah, they they had some good videos that they posted there. I was going to say, did you see the one that George was like filming as he's walking through the stadium? Yes. When he got there. <laughs> I was kind of like, I was trying to like people watch the people to be like, to see them like reacting to like exactly. George Foster and Charles Grant walking past because they're so large tall. humans. <laughs> they're, they're so tall. Uh, yeah. I was actually impressed with like some of them. I don't know if he was like holding the camera down or or what, but like I was they like, seem... dang, some of these guys are tall. <laughs> <laughs> George probably like had the camera at his waist or something. Yeah, seriously. Uh... <laughs> but I did. I did notice that nobody said anything to them. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's hilarious that's hilarious dude i i do have to say like his video of them like going into the stadium i guess they're on yeah. some kind of like like private bus or something like that some executive bus man that thing looks sweet oh, i don't <laughs> think i saw that one i saw the one when they were already in the stadium i need to go back to george's timeline and check oh go check it big george man like you, you gotta roll with you gotta roll with george to this <laughs> that was a nice that was a nice ride Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. I gotta yeah, go check that they're out. Basically, like driving slowly in like a sprinter executive executive van, and they're just like videoing all the Tennessee fans doing Rocky Top. Like you can see the band in the background. Like I don't know where they were in relation to you know tailgates or stadium or what, but like it looked pretty legit. Nice, nice. Uh, I well, think. Oh, saying, uh, we haven't mentioned. We haven't mentioned. We had. We had a nice payday too. We did have another payday. Yeah, dude. I mean, he's been he's been he's solid. Been rock solid. I mean, I was a little worried on that field goal on the road, you know, like it's yeah. loud, it's a loud environment. And he nailed that, he nailed that kick. I mean, in general, like that was the thing, was that this was the first. I mean, this, I mean, this is we hardly we were at home like the whole season, you know. I mean, we we're at home. Um, we had the cocktail party. Um, so I mean, this was definitely I and mean, this in Auburn. I guess I don't know. I mean, I you know um, which Auburn? Holy cow! Um. All right, so here's 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 where I think here's where I think like people are talking about like yes, like we 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 had another challenge on the road, blah, 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 all those things, like right. Mm-hmm. But earlier in the season, and again, like I feel like that this is a, a, an evolution of this team has been the injection of youth. CJ yeah. Allen wasn't didn't play yeah. a whole lot in that game, right? Like right. 
I mean, these guys that we've had at our disposal for the entirety of the season are getting worked in because the coaching staff either, I guess they decided to reward them for their efforts in practice um, or the guys, they, they felt like they weren't getting the production that they expected or that they want, or they weren't playing to the standard, you know, all those different things throughout the season. And it's hard not to notice that when we started playing some of these younger guys that we started getting the results that we were looking for. Yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of like, I mean, particularly, I mean, for the most part, we're talking about the defense, right? Cause we never have had that doubt for the offense. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. mostly been centered around the defense. Right. And so here's the thing that I'll say about some of that is that if it's kind of like, you remember when we had, I, I'm not going to bring up he who shall not be named, but um <laughs> It's kind of like if if you have a quarterback that the team believes should be playing, or if you have a quarterback that you know the team is invested in, or mm-hmm. you know if you if you can look to that guy, and you know, like okay, I'm I'm ready to play for you. I'm ready to play for you. And but if there's if there's things that are not happening, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that this is this is happening. It's just a theory, right? Like it feels like that they're collectively having fun out there now. Does that make sense? Like, I don't really know how else to describe it, but like, I feel like that even Bullard, who's been an absolute beast has become even more animated as this team has injected more youth into its, its lineup. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's a fair observation. Like, like they're all, they're all playing as one kind of thing. Yeah. And that's been some, that's been some of the hype videos, right? Like they are. And I feel like they're playing loose, um, like to your point, right? Like they're definitely like you're getting more reactions out of them and everything, uh, which is good for the GIF content. But okay, other than that, it's content. just fun to watch, right? It's fun to watch. So, oh my gosh, thank, thank you for whoever. Speaking of GIF content, thank you for whoever like asked for the the Kirby Carson Beck fist bump. Like, oh yeah, yeah, in the in the annals of all of the gifts that we have made in the entirety of our tenure here. That might be one of my favorite gifts, and I haven't actually used it yet. I don't, I, I'm, I'm kind of like waiting for a special moment to like use it for me personally. I don't know if you, I don't know if you put posted it from the pod or not, but um, I did. So I, did. I, nice. I, I went to go look to see who re- who requested it. So it was it was Zach. Uh, well, okay, so Zach SC Dog eight sixty four. He is who brought it to our attention. Um, but it was Dog Girl twenty seven. Uh, Ashley is who she said I need the Kirby. Beck fist bump gif. So she tweeted that and then Zach uh Zach tagged us and uh we made it happen. So nice. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That might be one of my most favorite gifts because I mean it's like Kirby's not even like looking, he's just like <laughs> it's like, yeah, dude. it's kind of like it's kind of like the uh the, the office the office gift with uh Jim and um Daryl. And he's mm. not even looking, not even looking, it's just <laughs> All right. I just remembered one more thing that I don't know if we want to talk about this or not. Uh, yeah. But um, prayers for Andrew Smart uh, living yes. through the wrath of his mom. <laughs> yes. yeah. That was definitely a post. That's definitely a post game situation with Andrew. <laughs> yeah. I, don't know. I mean, it sounds like that. Uh, I, all right. So here's here's my thing. Like, there's. I feel like that everybody's like thinking that it was like super duper inappropriate, which. Maybe right. it was, maybe it wasn't like, it's hard to, t- it's hard to, it's tell. Hard to tell. We, we don't it's know what he was tell. doing. I can't, I can't yeah. really, I can't really tell what he was doing. I can, yeah. part of me wants to think that he was doing something like this, but yeah. I could see how you could interpret it another way, which may, would make it super inappropriate, but right. Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> you can't, you can't really tell. It was so far really away. Tell. I mean, they zoomed in, but um but but like all all the who was it old rose sports i think is who tweeted out or whatever but all the all the replies would be like "Mm, mary beth's not gonna be happy (laughs) mary beth's not gonna be happy (laughs) it's like look a rage stroke and it's like a rage stroke from kirby is one thing uh but like i'm I'm pretty sure andrew's probably needs to be more worried about mary beth in that situation (laughs) yeah and Uh, i made the video i mean i made the video like what what would andrew be like talking to his mom like (laughs) yeah (laughs) It's like it's like Andrew Andrew is like those a few good men like you you want me on that wall you need me in that wall in places <laughs> deep down inside <laughs> and oh. and I have to say if if it if he wasn't it would make it less fun <laughs> right 
Right, right, for sure. So, uh, praise <laughs> up for Andrew. <laughs> Where's the Rough time. Oh man. So hashtag, yeah. Hashtag sorry, Mary Beth. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, I had I had forgotten to bring that up. I wasn't that, sure. But I feel like we had that was about, had that was about. a good one. That, I'm glad that we didn't have that one for the podcast after the podcast. <laughs> oh, we forgot to talk about that. Oh, we forgot to talk about that. <laughs> uh, what was on the menu? We haven't talked about menus. What was on your menu for the for the weekend? I will tell uh, you. I will. I will cut to the chase on my side. Okay. We were so strapped for time. Lindsay went out, was out shopping and doing stuff for her sessions next week, and I was doing. Um, I was doing yard work. Came in super tired. I was like, ah, "Let's order pizza." So we ordered pizza. Got it. Uh, yeah, we did. So the when the girls came back, uh, Ella Ella made the bean dip. So Ella and Lily went. To, they did the shopping. Uh, Ella made the bean dip. It was fantastic. Um, so we oh, was, the main, was that the main item? Well, that was the snack during the game. Right. Um, and then, yeah, so we had, uh, what we have? We had turkey. Um, so Ella was supposed to buy a small ham. So this is what happens when you said the kids at the grocery store. She was supposed to buy a small ham, came home with a small turkey on accident. It was pretty hilarious, actually. So <laughs> we ended up having sliced turkey instead of ham. Uh, and then green beans and cornbread. But Lily made the cornbread, and it was also excellent. So It sounds it like good. you guys had a wood Thanksgiving. Like what's yeah. going on? <laughs> it was, I don't know. I don't know. We let we let the kids we we like sent them to the store. Ella wanted to make the bean dip. We're like, okay, well you can go to the store. We're like, and you know what? Because we didn't have anything for dinner. We're like, you guys decide what you want to do, want for dinner. We'll help me make the list, and then you guys just go do the shopping or whatever. So it worked uh, out. The the joys of the joys of having a teenager that can drive. Right, right. Yes, we <laughs> sent them there. They were they were a team. The only mistake was they came up with turkey instead of ham. <laughs> <laughs> which was pretty funny but uh it was actually quite good turkey so it was good we were, it was cool i like it i like it yeah so that was the menu all right well we got we got the bees coming up next huh yep yep um on the flats a uh, mark rick field historic, historic mark rick field historic mark rick field or should we, do we do we like legally have to call it like Hyundai? <laughs> Dude, on the Bulldog Brunch, Jeff Dancer called it historic Hyundai Field. <laughs> historic Hyundai Field. <laughs> uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, yep, man. Yeah, we'll be back to talk to talk to them, and we will not be talking about the game this the following week because uh, we gotta keep the main thing the main thing. Focus on the jackets. All right, I'll do my best, Jim. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> All right. Well another another rocky flop and um off we, off we go eight no eight no in the sec and we're we're off to the races go dogs go dogs <laughs>